So, Lauren, let's go ahead and get started. I know you always like to ask some things and, and share your thoughts. So you go first, and then we'll start with the, the things I've got. Okay. All right. So this was a very interesting chapter, um, marketing, marketing in the streets. How do you market your business? Um, what is not enough? What, you know, how do you know when you've gone too far, which I don't think you can really go too far in marketing. Some people are over the top, but nevertheless, marketing is marketing and marketing is simply inviting someone to your business, inviting someone to taste your food. Um, so we're going to talk about some different things, um, some different ideas that uh, Bill has uh, put in the book. Old fashioned traditional marketing still works, guys. So there's no excuse for not marketing your business. There's no excuse for not inviting someone to have what you have. Um, some of us are shy. I get it. Um, Lori and I are not those people. Thank God. Some people are shy and that's not a bad thing. Um, just know that either you will pay somebody to do this. Yes, Bill is shy, right? Either you will pay somebody to do this or you'll get out there, save a few bucks and do some things on your own. Um, so, and so let's get into some of the marketing. One of the questions I'm going to put on the table early is finding out how Google, Bill, and we might have asked this question before, how Google rates. And so later on in your, um, in your conversation, maybe you will come across that. So I'll just kind of throw it out there. How does Google rate your ratings? For example, um, Double Trouble on Google Review have 70 reviews. 68 of those are five star, yet we still don't have a five star mark on our report. There's one three star report, there's one one star. Uh, but out of 70 reviews, 68 five stars, we still only rank at a 4.9. I'm not sure how that works. And I'm quite sure some of you might know or some of you might have that question. So let's talk about some of the ideas of marketing in the streets. Do you put a hot dog on your head, Joanne? Because I have a cheesesteak sandwich that I put on my head sometimes. I see people walking around with hot dog costumes. What do you do to take it to the streets? How, um, and this is for anybody, just, just take 30 seconds, 10 seconds, somebody, and just give me a way that you market your business right now. Just 10 seconds. Live. Give me an idea. Facebook Live. Do Facebook Live. Excellent. Excellent. What else? Samples. Samples, that's another great I'm idea. Well, what did he say after samples? Me? So, uh, no, I thought somebody else said something. Oh, okay. Samples. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, flyers. What else what are you cards? doing, guys, tomorrow? Flyers, okay. Whoa. Somebody said something. I hand business cards out that have uh, loyalty promotion on them. Okay, okay. So you'll see that there are so many things that you can do. Some will cost you some money. Some won't. I mean, some will be minimal. So. be maximal you just have to figure out how you're going to promote your business and how you're going to get the most out of that right um we've done dancing on the streets crazy which have people have u-turned in the middle of the street i think bill was in town one day when uh they were out on the street and it stopped dead track in the middle of the road to back up a woman street to come back in is dangerous on the street or whether it's just not your business or growing your business is going to yield a return. So, Bill, let's talk about some of the ideas you have and some of your ideas for marketing and um, and go ahead and open up that forum. Okay. All right. Well, the first question you guys see up there is what does marketing mean to you without saying social media? Because marketing is much broader of a subject than just social media. Everybody, when I say, how do you market your business? Even Joanne said it, we do Facebook Lives which is, is a great tool, but it's only one tool in that marketing toolbox. So here's just some quick things that you can do that aren't necessarily social media. Cross promote your location with a local supplier. So if you buy buns or you buy bread from a local baker, say, 
to the owner of that shop, hey, I would love to advertise your business. Can I have your logo to put on my, uh, you know, my counter or, or my serving window, let people know that I use your product. And if you don't mind, would you let people know that I sell your product from my, my truck and put that on your counter in your business? You can do that with a butcher. You can do it with a baker. If somebody supplies you with desserts, you cross promote each other because you're helping one small business succeed. And then that small business helps you succeed. So that's cross promotion. You can, and I actually saw this second one here. Um, I want to say last week, somebody had a Twitch feed and Twitch is basically YouTube and it's mainly Twitch is mostly for gamers, but it's a live feed where people can, um, you know, donate money. They can get little funny emojis that are specific to the particular channel that they're on. And they make comments and stuff. And you would think that, you know, tuning in to watch a uh, food truck take orders, and that's all they were doing, was sitting there. They had four cameras, and they were just a static view. One was the guy taking orders. One was the guy cooking the orders. One was the line. So you could actually see how quickly they were moving the line. And then the other one, one was kind of where they assembled the sandwich to pass it out. And, you, and I was watching that going, why would anybody watch this other than to see how long the line was and to know whether to go um, use that food truck or not? And then I started reading the comments and people were commenting on, hey, he forgot to suggest a sell. I bet this person's going to order. I don't even remember what their menu was, but they were, they were commenting between each other, watching this feed on what the people in the truck were getting ready to do. Hey, he needs to drop a burger because somebody just ordered one. I mean, it, it was amazing to me and i really wish i could remember the name of the truck but if you want to see how twitch works bob ross has a channel and we all know bob ross died probably 20 years ago or more and his his uh, pbs shows are still being played well they have a channel where they're playing it and people will comment on i bet he's going to put a tree right there i bet he's going to say that's a happy accident i mean they know what they're watching. So that's one way to get your, your food truck out in front of people without you having to sit and do it all the time. Have some type of guest loyalty program. It is 2022, guys, so you can have an electronic loyalty program. But I have in the past, for decades, used business cards. My business card for the hot dog cart had seven stars on it. And the background is, is the, a sky, basically. So the stars fit in. So I'd hand somebody my business card, and it you know, has my name and, and all the information they need to know about my uh, hot dog business. And they would say, what do these stars mean? And I would tell them two things. Between my wife and I, we have seven kids. So that's why there's seven stars. But if you will come and buy something from me seven times, I'm going to give you something for free. So now they're encouraged to hang on to my business card because now it's a loyalty card. And the business card reminds them that, uh, you know, I do catering and reminds them what I sell. So you got to have a loyalty program. You got to have bounce back coupons. This is something that a lot of people don't even know what that is. A bounce back coupon is something that you give to somebody while you're running another promotion. So for example, you get on, on Facebook and talk about, hey, come down today. We're going to do a special on Philly cheesesteaks. You know, they're going to be, you know, $10 instead of our normal price, whatever it is. So you've encouraged some people to come visit you. That's a good thing. What you want to do is once they come visit you, put another coupon in their hand. So they'll come back again in the future. This is a coupon just for you because you came today. And this coupon can be, it can be a great deal. It could be an okay deal, whatever your finances require. But it could be something as simple as, you know, here's a free drink the next time you come back. You know, buy a sandwich, I'll give you a free drink. So you're only giving away, you know, 40, 50 cents. But it's the value that the person's getting. They came in and got a deal. You're giving them another deal to come in the future. That's what a bounce back coupon is. They're bouncing back to your business. A fishbowl drawing. This is an old time thing. But I'll tell you why we did this. You take a fishbowl, set it on your little serving counter and ask everybody to drop in their business card. And then once a week, you make a drawing and promise to feed the office or whatever, you know, promise to bring them lunch. 
whatever your um, particular food is, you're going to bring it to them. So people drop in their business card. What that tells you when you pull those business cards out is where your customers and where your guests are coming from. What neighborhood are they coming from? What area? So now you know that if you see a bunch of business cards coming from the same generalized area, you need to go there and advertise more. But then it also identifies areas that may be around you that you're not getting people from. So you need to go there as well to introduce your business to those people that have not been coming frequently to your to your food truck. You can do that electronically. You can do it again with a physical fishbowl, but it's a way of gathering information. And that's what's key here, gathering information. Flyers, Joanne mentioned flyers. You wanna take them to local offices and real estate companies, break rooms of uh, the bigger businesses that are retail businesses like you know, Dollar Tree or Dollar General, you know, Walmart even has break rooms to say, hey, would you guys mind putting this up in your break room so people know that my food truck is just around the corner or whatever. Those help to introduce you to people without you physically being there because it's something you're leaving. Radio. A lot of people don't take advantage of radio because they think, well, radio is expensive. You know, TV's millions of dollars to get on the Super Bowl. It's got to be thousands of dollars to get on the radio. It's not. Radio stations are always playing the games and the giveaways, and they need people to fund those giveaways. So you could do a, a contest that the radio uh, station, you know, name this song or be the fifth caller or, or whatever they do. And you're going to say, I'm going to, going to provide the winner of today, you know, lunch on me or, or whatever kind of package that makes financial sense to you. You get mentions all throughout the day because there's only going to be one or two winners. So you're giving away, you know, maybe $10 uh, worth of food at most, not the retail price, the actual cost to you, but you're getting, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 mentions on the radio. So there's several hundred people getting to hear your name. And the more frequently they hear your name, the more likely they are to remember you when they get hungry. So radio is a benefit, but you do it as a trade. You're not going to go in and say, hey, here's $500. What can I get for it? You go in and say, hey, I would like to be able to trade uh, my food for something that you guys need to, to fund a game. Or you could even just take food to the radio DJs. They love to eat. You know, just, just let the program manager know that I would like to bring some food to the DJs. Well, it's a good time to bring it in. And they'll tell you what a good time is, and the DJ will eat your food and most likely talk about it for at least a couple of minutes. Oh, they just brought me this cheesesteak. It's awesome. They just brought me this hamburger, or in my case, it was always hot dogs. This is so great. I'm so glad they brought it in. I was so hungry. You know, they, they just rant and rave about it, and it, it works. Marketing also goes beyond the physical activities. It's your signage, it's your wrap on your, your trailer, your truck, it's flags, it's decals. All of those things are marketing. So when I ask people to set aside money for your marketing budget, part of that money is going to replace this stuff as it gets worn and torn and, and faded from sun. So you've got to have that marketing fund established. If you were to buy a McDonald's, for instance, you know, and suddenly think you're going to be a millionaire, part of the sales, the top line sales goes towards national marketing and local marketing. And right now it's about 7% of the sales. So you're actually funding your own marketing. So if the big guys do it, we should be doing it. And I recommend at least three to 4% of your sales should be set aside to replace things, to fix things and to get new things. Uh, A-frame signs, that's marketing. Changing out your menu, that's marketing. Um, your website, that's marketing. All of those things are costs that would fall under the marketing banner, under the marketing expense account. A lot of people put photos on their food truck, and that's an anchor. You know, your food truck is obviously a food truck. When the window goes up, people know that's a food truck. You're selling something. When you attach a photograph of your food on there, that's a good draw because it helps people to know what you're selling without them having to, to come up and read your menu. 
The downside to that is you're locked into that particular product and it becomes really expensive if you decide that, um, let's say that you're a hot dog vendor and the particular brand that you're selling goes out of business and you have that plastered all over your hot dog uh, trailer. Now you're having to spend money. So think about, do I really want this, this hamburger on this, the side of my uh, food truck or does want to have the word hamburgers? So really choose wisely if you're going to put photos on there. Uh, the next line there is talking about community involvement. I'm going to share a story from when I lived in Central Florida. This is in Ocala, Florida. And this was back in the 80s. So this was before we took credit cards. And, um, and it should be involvement, even though it's misspelled. Um, in any case, the, uh, the thing that I did for my hot dog cart is I was a part of the... Um, the Foster Parents Association, they asked me if I would be a part of their board of directors to help them to raise money through United Way. And of course, I agreed to do that. And I helped them get the funding. Well, while I'm working with them, I saw a need for them to make more money. Because even though the state pays for the children, they don't pay near enough for a lot of the kids that are in foster care, especially long term foster care. They were shortages on medical needs, glasses, for instance. Some of the kids needed hearing aids and they wouldn't replace them as quickly as they needed them to be replaced. Um, you know, just, just some of the basic needs were not being met. So I helped them to raise money. But to be effective with that, you can't just write a check and say, here you go. You want to help them raise money while it helps you build business. So what we did is the one of the ladies had a contact in one of the uh, clothing manufacturers. So every time they messed up seams and, and you know, put the wrong kind of, of design on the jeans, they would basically give them away. And she was able to get several hundred articles of clothing donated every month, no cost. And she would run out of her uh, shed in the back of her yard uh, a sale. All the foster parents could come and buy any article of clothing for a dollar. So it could be a shirt, it could be blue jeans, it could be whatever she got donated, buy it for a dollar. And they would use that money to help you know, fund the kids' needs that weren't being met. So I said, how about if we do this? Let's make it a bigger event. Let's get the community involved. Let's get other businesses to donate. Let's get you know, the mall stores and, and those kind of things where they take stuff back that they can't sell again. Let's get them involved. And then we got uh, one of the businesses to let us use their gymnasium. So we set up inside the gymnasium and we would do this once a month. And I would set up with my little hot dog cart and I would match um, everything that got sold on the inside. I would donate uh, for my sales. And I was able to also use the bounce back coupons. Here you go. You're coming in today to donate to the foster parents. That's awesome. Here's my coupon. Come back and visit with me uh, again. And that helped to build my sales. It helped to get people seeing my little tiny business being a leader in my community. You guys can do the same thing. Just think big. If you don't do anything else, or get anything else out of this, um, this video tonight, it is think big. Just go for it. You got to have a website with online ordering. Everybody expects there to be some type of online ordering available. It's become an expectation. So set yourself up a website with online ordering capabilities. Now in the book, I've got 55, I think, 55 marketing tips. The very first one starts with Dave Thomas. And this is so important. You know, Lauren mentioned that marketing is just an invitation to get people to come buy your food. That's all it is. But before you invite anyone to your business, your business has to be able to, number one, handle it. There's no point in inviting a thousand people to your business if you can only handle a hundred. Your business has to 
impress them. Your um, speed of service is one. Your service also needs to be friendly. The food needs to be hot. So you want hot food hot, cold food cold. You want to impress them. So Dave Thomas, a lot of people don't know, was actually a KFC franchisee before he founded Wendy's Hamburgers. And he took nine very old run down um, KFCs and turned them around and was able to bankroll those nine when he sold them into what ended up becoming uh, Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers. So Dave Thomas got to work with Colonel Sanders himself. And he always talked about uh, the Colonel being his mentor, so to speak. Dave Thomas is exactly, if you guys remember his commercials, he is exactly like that in real life. He uh, lived in Columbus, Ohio, and was just as down home as he could possibly be. A very nice guy, but he was very smart. And he taught all of us, if you're going to market to people, you've got to impress them. Otherwise, you're spending money to chase people away. So make sure you can handle people, handle all the sales you're going to be bringing in. And then one of the ones, uh, one of the tips that I gave last time that people seem to really enjoy. So I will talk about it this time as soon as I let these folks in, the one in, stealing the marketing dollars of your competitors. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. If somebody is doing the old time, um, business cards or the loyalty cards where you buy, you know, 10 of something, you get something free. You can advertise on your menu that if they're using a loyalty card from a competitor, that you'll match it. You know, I will take that out of your hands right now and give you a free side of fries. I'll give you a free drink or I'll give you a free sandwich. What you're doing is you're now removing a reason for that guest to go to your competitor. You just pull that coupon out of their hands and then you want to encourage them to get onto your loyalty program. So the other business has spent the money to print the card and you're the one that's saying, Hey, I'll be happy to take that off your hands. We used to do this at one of the Burger King franchises. And this was something that was introduced to me and I don't know, 20 years ago. And I thought it was just the neatest thing. The owner said, we're going to take everybody's coupon. And he meant that any coupon, you could bring in a Tide coupon and we'd figure out a way to convert that into some type of a discount for your order that particular day at the Burger King. But the ultimate goal was when McDonald's or Wendy's or somebody else would print those coupons, hey, bring them to us. We will be happy to match whatever that offer is. So if it was a buy one, get one free Big Mac, not a problem. We'll do a buy one, get one free Whopper because we took their marketing and turned it against them. So those are some of the things that you can do to help yourself to become the marketing genius that you want to be and bring in all the sales to your business. Now, the last part of the, the chapter is about brand development. And brand development is way more than just selecting colors and fonts. The brand is your business's personality. So one of the things that we talk about in the chapter here is you got to really start working on your mission statement. And then it helps to develop your brand, your thoughts on your brand. So you're going to ask questions like, who are you? Both as a person in the vending business and then who is the business itself? You've got to have answers to those questions. And it's okay for it to take a while. What are you doing? And we're talking as in what food type, what service style? Are you doing events? Are you doing daily setups? You're driving a route? Are you doing a combination of all of them? You're strictly catering. Those help to define your brand. Because if you're only going to do catering, let's say you're going to, you know, your goal is to have a catering every Saturday and every Sunday. That's awesome. But now you're focused and now you know exactly what you're going to be doing. And you can communicate that well as your brand when you're talking to people. You want to explain why are you doing it? And this again is from chapter one, which is I want a food truck. You got to explain your why. And it's got to be something that is so motivational that you cannot get past it. And it doesn't matter what the why is, it just has to be powerful to you. 
That's all that matters is to you. What are you hoping to accomplish? And you want to think beyond turning a profit. Think about being a part of the community. You know, I talked about those neat things that we did. And I could share tons of stories, the stuff we did in the community. We did a lot of stuff with foster kids. We did a lot of stuff with uh, just general um, charities. We did a trash and treasure event. That's all got me started in food trucks in the 1980s. Um, you know, you can do those uh, events for cancer where they do the, the run for life, where they you know, stay up 24 hours and do all kinds of neat things. There's all kinds of things you can do to be a part of your community that people start to associate beyond, hey, they sell great food. Hey, they're really friendly over there. They start to think about you as a part of the community and they connect those warm and fuzzy feelings. So when they connect more warm and fuzzy feelings to your business, they're more likely to come eat when they get hungry. And then you want to talk about, again, to yourself, how are you going to accomplish that goal? This will play into your business plan. And that's something we'll be going over in a couple of weeks is the actual business plan. So that in a nutshell is the, um, the chapter we've been going over tonight about marketing. And I intentionally didn't talk about anything on social media because that's going to be next week's, as you can see. Next chapter is called Build It and They Will Want to See Your Social Media. Because social media is almost as important as your license because that validates you as a business. You're a real business if you have social media. You're a real business if you have a website. Even though you get all kinds of equipment sitting all around you, people don't see that as being real until they know you have a website and they can uh, look you up from the comfort of their own home. And then the last little, go ahead. No, no. Well, the last little thing no, I was gonna say no. is just, just to make sure you guys leave a review on Amazon. Okay, so it's all yours, Lauren. So no, 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 that was good. I was just, um, sometimes marketing um, is getting out of your comfort zone, right? Absolutely. Um, sometimes it's not doing those things that you don't normally do. Um, when we're down or when we're just out, we'll always wear our shirts because one is a conversation piece to just get people going. Well, what is double trouble? Oh, where's this place that they'll ask? And we're walking billboards and not just because I'm almost the size of a billboard, but like we're literally walking billboards, right? So everywhere we go, nobody should walk past your truck without being acknowledged, right? So for example, when people are walking by your truck, whether they're just browsing to see what you're serving, they shouldn't just look without your input. Somebody should be addressing them and catching them. Part of your marketing, so if you're walking by and you're looking at the menu, when somebody from my window is yelling out, Hi, if we can answer any questions, let us know. We're authentic Philly cheesesteaks, and we're this, and we're this. Try this, or taste this. Or if you've already had dinner, come back for dessert and try this. They never, ever get to walk by our truck and pause without being acknowledged from somebody from the food truck. And people will tell you, oh, y'all spoke, so I'm coming back. Or y'all at least told us what you're offered. You'll go by the other trucks. They won't say a word. They just look at you like a display at the zoo. So... Get out of your comfort zones. Um, is there any ideas out there? So let's ask you guys. Um, is there any marketing ideas that you guys have done or put to use or want to put to use and maybe not know how to go about it? Um, share with us real quick before Bill goes to questions. If there's anything out there that you just want to try, maybe you just don't have the nerve, maybe you just don't know how to go about it. Share with us an idea you may have that's not even listed here in the book maybe. Anybody? I'll go. Um, this is Lori. Um, so this may surprise you, but my truck still isn't ready. Uh, but I do have a few. <laughs> I do have a few ideas that I would like to do. Um, one is kind of similar to um, what Bill did with um, with the foster kids. I kind of want to do either a foster home or like an abusive shelter for a minute for women and children. I kind of want to go and do like my soft opening with them. And I want to do a press release with it. Um, 
you know, I, I haven't uh, worked all of that out yet. I know you have to plan in advance to, uh, to do a press release, but that's kind of my idea is to do something good, to give it away to the kids and to, while we're practicing and mastering our, you know, techniques and, you know, getting our systems in place kind of thing. And my other idea is um, just to park. So we're not, we're, so being an ice cream, like a hand dipped ice cream truck, we're not allowed to really, you know, we're not allowed to stay in one place for more than an hour in, in Fort Worth. That's the health department requirement, unless, um, you know, unless you have your permit and your bathroom sign thing and all that stuff. Like, you know, if you have a, a spot, it's fine. But if you don't, like you're, you're not allowed to. So my idea is to just go to um, Costco for, you know, and just park in the back to where everyone can see the truck, like not, you know, whatever, when they're pulling in, they can just, just for a visual, just park, pretend I'm shopping for an hour and then leave and then go to Sam's Club, you know, in these huge parking lots and go to Walmart and just to get a visual, you know, for the truck. And so people can see it and just to kind of get my brand out there so people can start seeing me around the neighborhood. Yeah, that's Absolutely, that's a great idea. Tell them what you guys do on your personal vehicles, Lauren. So we um, we all have magnets on our cars. And um, so everywhere we go, somebody can find our location or, or call into us. And they're not only on our car, they're on all of our family members' cars. My parents, <laughs> we got friends asking us. So as these cars are driving around, people, we'll see people at the light, we'll stop at the light and go, look, they're taking a picture of the car or they're taking a picture of the number or they roll down and go, where are you located? So that's another, um, that's another tool. So that's a great idea, Lori. Yeah, I use everything to, to that advantage.